I'm going to show you how I diagnose a sewing a machine when it's having uh, tension or threading issues. In other words, it's looping big or small, it's bird nesting under the needle plate, it's breaking thread or whatever. <clears throat> You're sewing along and the machine seems to be working fine but the stitches just aren't there. It's not making the stitch like it's supposed to make it. I'm going to show you the steps that I go through to check to see where the problem is so that I can fix it. Before I do that, I have to explain to you how a, how a machine makes a stitch. And when I say a machine, a sewing machine, um, every machine that's ever been made since the 1800s makes a stitch the exact same way. It may not seem that way because the components are a little bit different. It looks completely different, but I assure you, they all make a stitch the exact same way. So, <clears throat> with that being said, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> with that being said, I'm going to describe to you how the machine makes the stitch and then I'll show it to you and then we'll go through um, we'll go through the process of diagnosing it. So you've got your thread, which this has thread right here, and it goes through the first thing that it does comes off the spool and goes through one or more uh, thread guides. And from the thread guides, it immediately goes it immediately goes to the um, tensioners, the tension discs, which on a machine like this, is right here. On most machines today, your tension discs are right here. You can't see them unless you put a light there, but they are there. The next thing is it goes through a small take-up spring. <clears throat> and again, on machines like this, you cannot see it. On, on your vintage machines, you can see it very well because it is on right on the tensioner. On these, you can't see it, but if you take it apart, there is a tension a take up spring right back here and what this is for is to take up the take up the uh, extra thread when your take up lever comes down so that it doesn't just make a horrible mess from from the take up spring or tension spring the next place that it goes is the take up lever which is right here that is the same on 90% of the machines out there. The only machine that I have seen that is different than this. Now, some of them you can't see, but they're still there. But the only one that I have seen that's different is the Singer Futura uh, and the newer ones. Not the old Futuras, not the vintage Futuras. But for, I think, about the past five years, and now they're starting to actually get into some of the uh, actual sewing machines other than other than uh, embroidery machines but rather than having a take-up lever that you see and you thread right here it has a take-up lever back here that you do not thread you just simply run run the thread and that lever goes back and forth just like this and when it comes this way it pulls the thread and I I, I understand that most of you don't understand what take-up lever does but I will explain that in just a little bit so then from your take-up lever it's going to come straight down, down through here, and it's going to go to some more take up uh, uh, thread guides. Um, I don't want to get that. Ooh, that's bright. That's too bright. So it's going to come right down through here. I've got red thread here through thread guides, and this the thread guides are to control the thread so that they don't get stuck somewhere, so the thread doesn't get stuck somewhere. And cause you problems. That's the whole, whole reason for the take up guide, uh, the the thread guide, is to keep the thread under control. And then it comes down and goes into your needle. So the way this works is, your needle takes takes the thread through the material beneath the the needle plate into the bobbin case area. Your hook, which is what your bobbin case sits in, comes around. And it grabs the thread. It grabs the thread from the needle, takes it completely around the uh, the bobbin case. Which, when it does that, it encompasses the bobbin thread. 
Then your take then the needle's coming back up, your take up lever comes up and it pulls the thread back up out of there, creating a stitch. Now this is the important part right here. This is what's so important because I haven't talked about the tension discs yet, but this is where the tension discs come into place. The tension discs are designed to put pressure on the thread coming from the spool so that when the take-up lever comes up, it pulls thread from the bobbin case area and makes the proper stitch inside the fabric that you're, that you're sewing as opposed to pulling the thread from here. Now, just like anything else, just like water runs down, run, runs downhill, and electric, electricity takes the path of least resistance, there's no difference here. When this take-up lever comes up, it's pulling thread from where there's least resistance. Period. End of story. So, your tension discs are designed to put more tension here so that the thread has to come from here. When everything's working properly and your thread's in the right place, then everything's great and it works great. If anything gets out of place, anything, then the whole process goes wacko. And honestly, it's quite easy. Um, the thread in this bobbin case moves very quickly. And I mean very quickly. This whole process moves very quickly. You know how fast the sewing machine moves. Anything that, any little nick anywhere in the system, beyond, anywhere, any nick anywhere in the system beyond past this take-up lever is going to cause problems. It's going to add tension. And when you, you increase the tension just a little bit, and instead of even if it even if it's just even if it pulls just a millimeter of thread from here when it's supposed to be pulling it from here, you're now starting a loop a looping process, um, and there's no way to get that out at that point. Once it pulls a thread from here, that's it. You you'll you can't fix that. You can't fix that stitch. You've just you've got to pull it out and redo it. Um, so now I'm going to go through uh, <clears throat> what you want to do when you start having those problems. So the first thing I do, somebody comes in, my machine's doing this, it is giving me a hard time. The first thing I want to do is I want to check and I want to follow the thread and I want to make sure that it follows the correct path. The first thing that I like to do is I will take a flashlight and I will shine inside here and I will look in the tension discs and I will make sure that the thread is A, in the tension discs and not on top of it because if you don't thread it correctly, your thread will be on top of the tension disc and that it has not fallen or been pulled to the outside of the tension disc because some machines, if you're not careful with the way you thread it, it will actually fall to the outside of the tension disc and you won't know it. At this point, if you're not putting tension, if you're not putting tension on your thread, then you're pulling thread from here when it should be being pulled from here and you've got problems. So I check that, then I make sure that it comes down around and into the take up lever. There are a few machines out there because this moves so fast and the new way of threading it is just slide it in. It will actually throw the thread out of the take-up lever. It's not a whole lot, doesn't happen a whole lot, but one or two of them do it. So always, if you're having problems, always, always, always check the take-up lever and check the tension discs, okay? So I've checked that, now I'm following it, I'm making sure that I don't see anything out of the ordinary on the threading. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check my needle. Okay, so I'm going to pull my thread out of here and I can use my fingernail. I can use, I, I, I have a lot of these little fingernail files because they come in handy. I can use anything real small and thin, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on this, on the needle and I'm going to run it down it. And I'm trying to see if there's a burr anywhere on that needle. Okay, if I feel a burr on the needle, 
then it's time to get rid of that needle. That's it. It's done. Um, that's not the only problem that a needle can have. There's many problems it can have, and I'll go over that in another video on needles. But <clears throat> that is the first thing that I check on a needle is to see if it has a burr. If it has a burr, then it's time to change it. Now, when you're doing this, you find a problem. Um, normally, I will go through this entire process because a machine can have two, three, four, five problems causing the one issue. The machines move fast. When you have one problem, they can quickly escalate and cause damage in several different places in just half a second. So I will normally go through the whole thing and look at the whole thing before before I um, before I go to use it again. Um, <clears throat> so now once I've done that, the next thing I want to do is I want to check my tension. I want to check my thread through my tension disc and make sure that it's correct because sometimes you can have other problems with your tension discs other than uh, the thread not being in it or it not being properly adjusted. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that my, I, first I'm going to, I'm going to raise my presser foot. The reason I'm going to raise it is because it opens the tension discs. Um, it's, and so you should be threading your machine with your tension discs open so that your thread falls in it. I'm going to open it because I want to make sure that my thread's not sticking anywhere. Right? So I'm going to pull it and I'm going to see if it pulls freely or if I have tension. And here it pulls freely. Okay. So now I want to see if I've got tension. So I'm going to put that down. And I'm pulling on it. And I do, yeah, I feel a little bit of tension. Not, not an extreme amount. And you shouldn't have an extreme amount. Uh, normally I have tension on about three or four for, you know, regular type jobs. If you're sewing several layers of denim, you might put it on five or six. Um, and I'm pulling it, got a little bit of tension. Okay, now, this is crucial. I want to make sure that those tension discs are, in fact, working right. Okay, so I close the tension disc. I've got tension. Let's turn the tension up. All right, I'm going to turn it up. And it was on three. I'm going to put it on five. And now I'm going to pull it again. Okay, I have significant more tension. All right, well, let's go on up. I'm going to take it all the way now. I'm going to take this one all the way to nine. And I'm going to do it again. And now I have a lot more tension. In fact, it'd be easy to break this thread if I'm not careful. So my tension discs are working right. If they're not working right, then you need to identify the problem and fix it. And um, there are several different problems that it can have to get it fixed. And I will go over those in uh, another video. But if if this is if your tension discs are working right, then good if they're not then you're going to have to address that issue the next thing is i want to um inspect my needle plate if my needle plate has been damaged by the needle then the thread can get caught in those grooves and nicks and stuff and create tension here which means when my take up lever comes up it's going to pull thread from here and now i'm looping um, as well, if it's sharp, it can break the thread. All right, so I'm going to take it off. I'm going to take my uh, new plate off. And I'm going to inspect the needle plate. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Get it off. I should have had this out already. Anyway, all right. Pull that out and make this easier to come off. Okay. So, ooh. Um, so I'm going to inspect this here. I'm going to see if there's any damage. And actually, there's a little bit of damage here. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Um, that needs to be cleaned up. Any any type of small grooves, any type of small nicks, anything that is small, that can grab the thread, that can bind the thread, that can cut the thread, that's sharp, anything like that. You can use like a Dremel or whatever and take that out of there. Um, but that's what you're looking for. Next, 
you're looking at your um, next thing that you're doing is you're looking at your um, um, oh my gosh bobbin case okay so you're looking at your bobbin case and like this one I don't let me make sure that you can see this get it up here you see the damage on it right here right there where the needles hit it okay that that can cause you problems that can cause problems that will cause you they'll slow your thread down and cause the thread to be pulled from the uh, the spool rather than out of the bobbin case and now you're looping any damage on here will cause that as well when you inspect whoop, as well when you inspect it inspect all this down here okay I'm gonna zoom that back out um, inspect all this down here and make sure that there's nothing down here if you see any Anything where the thread is damaged that has uh, created any type of damage to that, then it has to come out or replace the bobbin case. Okay, um, at that point, once I have done that, then I'm going to uh, check the machine. I'm going, to, I'm going to get rid of the damage that I find, and you, normally that takes care of it. Uh, those are the major issues that will cause your machine to have problems. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. But those are the things that cause the most, the most issues. Um, again, I can't stress enough the needle. The needle, if anytime you have a critical hit, anytime you have any type of damage at all that the needle's caused, even if the needle looks good, you need to replace it. Um, your tension discs and your take-up lever are the two things that I see that cause problems the most. Thread gets thrown out. For some reason, somebody forgets to thread it. Uh, the thread doesn't get in the tension discs. The, uh, the take-up lever hasn't been lifted when they were threading it. Stuff like that. So those are the two main things. And then the next two are the... Are the... Um, or the next three is the needle, the needle plate, and the bobbin case. Thank you for watching the video. If y'all like more information on how a machine works, maintenance, care, or small repairs that you can do from home, then check out the guide below. Once you've checked it out, leave me a review and let me know what you think. Thank you again. Y'all have a great day. Stay safe and healthy.